grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, our Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, we are entering and exploring new things here at the Prince of Peace. Uh, we, are, we have spent some time thinking about where God wants us to go, and, and today at the Half Year AGM, you're going to hear a bit more about uh, what that process is going to look like, and, and we're calling it God Dreams, because uh, we don't want it to be about what we want to do. Uh, we want to do what God wants us to do. So we're going to be exploring that and thinking through that. And, and just as a runner needs to carb load, um, so if you don't know this, runners, before they have big races, they eat a ton of pasta, a lot of carbohydrates, because that's that l energy they need on the race. And so we're going to carb load here in the next a month or so as we go through the book of James. Um, we're going to eat up all this good stuff about how it is we go about living our faith, how we go about that. And so James gives us a good way. And so in many ways, we are going to um, be like my dog. Uh, we had a dog uh, when we were back in the States when Kirby and I first got married. Um, Maybe you, you do it here in, the, in Australia, but in the States, when you get married, you get a trainer dog before you get kids, right? Make sure you know how to handle it, right? Some responsibility, right? That's so, so we got a dog, Mocha was her name, or Maka, as my mother-in-law would say in her Australian accent. And, uh, and so she was a little Labradoodle, and we bought her, got her as a puppy, and all the challenges of having a dog, right? Of having a puppy especially. And one of those is they get into everything and they want to eat everything. And uh, as you can imagine, that's what happened. And one of the things that she got into um, was, was a Bible. She ate a Bible. Not like, she ate a few pages, okay? She didn't eat like the whole thing, a whole chunk. But, but I have a Bible back home that's got a big chunk out of it. Uh, a couple pages have some verses missing. Um, and so uh, she, she ate the Bible. Now, we're not going to literally eat this book, but, but we are going to dig into it, to feast into its words, to see how it might apply to our lives and apply to our church. And so we're going to dig in. And the first way, first verse I want us to look into is kind of the core of James. It says it right here. Oh, sorry, back up a second. That's not this verse yet. Um, this is this idea of we shall eat this food. So, but he opened, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We need to feast on this word, this word of God. Here again, it says, your words were found and I ate them. This is Jeremiah. And your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. So we feast, we eat. And in many ways, this book of James is a manual for maturity. We're so used to, as Lutherans, focusing in on Ephesians, on, on Romans, and the grace that it demonstrates. And if you've been Lutheran for a while in a lot of Bible studies, you might have heard that that Luther didn't like the book of James because he thought it might confuse people because it talks about works. And Luther's whole thing was to try to get the church away from dependence on works, from this false belief that I need to contribute to my salvation. And so he was...
God has come for us. Of his own will, he brought us forth into this world. And so we must never forget, even in the book of James, that God is the one doing the work. It's of his decision. He's the one who chooses us. Okay, but let's keep on breaking down this verse. Because then it says, by the word of truth. So how did God... By the word of truth. So what's the word of truth here? Well, James is reminding us the word of truth is the gospel. What God has done for us. The fact that Jesus came, that Jesus loves you, Jesus died for you, Jesus was risen for you. That everything, the whole harvest is God's. And this first fruits is a, a, an acknowledgement that God has done all the work here. And it's a foretaste, it's a first fruits of all of the plenty that's going to come later. And so we are God's first fruits here in this world. And we will receive the fullness of Christ to come, but we are also the first fruits of his creation means we are the blessed ones for the rest, right? We are called to love and serve all people. We serve as a first fruits of his creation to all the world. And so here again is at the core of James. And so we're going to, how do we respond to this? What do we do with this first section? This idea that Jesus bought us, Jesus loves us, Jesus calls us to live as his first fruits. Well, let's first think of the idea of, at the core of this, the word of truth. Let's go back to this idea of thinking about the Bible. And so let's just simply think about receiving it. Receiving the Bible for what it is. It says here in James 1, we're just going to go through verse by verse here for a little bit. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. So we are called to with meekness receive the word of God in our hearts. Again, this is the gift of faith. This is what God is instilling in you. And so as we're challenged throughout this whole book to do all these different things, we must again first remember it starts here. To receive with meekness, with humbleness, realizing it's not all about me. It's not what I'm going to achieve or even what this church is going to achieve. We are receiving with humbleness the gifts of God. What God is giving in us through his word, through what he has done. We receive it with humbleness. So we're called to do that. Because sometimes we don't always receive. Sometimes we don't always listen. Maybe we're distracted. Maybe we have pride in our way. And there's lots of ways that we get distracted in this world. Lots of ways we let pride get in our way. And so we're called to, to open the doors as if we're hosting. To welcome people in. To do it humbly. So we need to re receive the word of God, not be distracted, not looking to other things. And when we do it with humbleness, God will work in us and through us. And then we respond to it. So we receive it and then we respond to it. It says 
in Mark the next verse or in James the next verse. But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. So we need to respond. We can't just sit and listen. There's um, a great little children's book by Lost Sheep. It's a publisher, children's book publisher here um, in Australia. We always got their books. And there's this great one uh, called The Preacher Duck. And so the story goes like this. The bunch of ducks all come into church. And this great duck, Preacher Duck, proclaims that we have wings, God gave us wings, so we should fly. God gave us wings, so we should soar, and we should, you know, the kangaroo hops, and, and the, the, the echidna walks, waddles, or whatever the echidna does, right? I don't know, we don't have echidnas. But the whole point is that the preacher duck says we must fly. And the whole congregation says, hallelujah, yes, right? So they're responding, right? And they're saying, yes, yes, yes. And then how does the book end? The ducks waddle home. They don't fly. They waddle. And so they are hearers of the word, but they're not doers of the word. How often does that fall in our lives? How often do we listen? Do we hear the word of God? Do we hear a sermon? Do we hear a song and go, yeah, amen to that, right? And yet, we go home and we don't do anything. It doesn't change us. And because we need to reflect on it more. I think one of the, the things we're trying to do at the Together at Five service is try to think about uh, taking the message time and getting some application into it in our homes and in our families. And so, as part of our message time, we actually take a pause and say, discuss it at your tables. Discuss it within your family or whoever is with you today. Start to try to apply this. Get that reflection time going. Let's not just be hearers, but let's be doers. Let's reflect more. It's this idea, and I love what James does, how he describes this, right? For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror, for he looks at himself and goes away at once and forgets what he is like. It's this idea of looking in a mirror. You see it clear as day, who you are, what you are, what you look like. And it says if you leave and you forget everything that you look like. That's what it means to not be a doer. That's what it means. You, you look, you reflect, you think about, and then you just forget. We look at the mirror and what do we do? We adjust our hair if we have it we clean our face make ourselves look proper and good right not just for church when we go out on dates when we go to work right all those things we must treat the word of god we must treat our time together here on sunday mornings in the same way we must not just walk away from this place and do nothing and not reflect intently on it. Think it through. Meditate on it. That's what we must do. And so finally, we're called to take the next step, maybe even to go deeper and, and to research it. And this is this idea of looking intently. Look at what he says in the next verse. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, will be blessed in his doing. So this idea of looking intently into the law, even the things you don't like, even the things that make you uncomfortable, we must look at, we must reflect at, we must be doers of. So we're going to continue through this book of James. This is just setting us up and reminding us that, that we can't just take this time together and forget it. We must adapt. We must fix. We must be doers of the word. But always remember that, that this is by the will of God, that he has chosen you. And so when you do forget, 
we love you. We'll remind you. When I walk out and I haven't fixed my hair or there's something in between my teeth, guess who tells me? My wife. And I love her for it. And we help each other. We're going to do that here together as a church. When we see one of us struggling and forgetting and not doing, we're going to love each other and point it out in loving and kind ways to challenge each other, to be doers. We can't just do this isolated. We do this together. Last week we talked about being guardians, about being next to each other in battle, in defense, in standing in the word. We're going to do it here in James too. Think about how we are doers, but we do it together. We do it with love and care for each other. And so I'm excited for the book of James and the challenges and the the difficult ways I, as a pastor, must walk through this with grace, even though it tells us, forget about faith, just do. We're going to work through it together. It's going to be great. We're going to be challenged. We're going to find out that God's love for us is so great. And God's love for this church is so great that he wants us to be the first fruits to share in the joy and the love we have experienced ourselves. Amen.